Hey everyone, this is Jedi Weller here from OpenForge, and I'm excited today to talk about Phaser and Angular and optimizing performance for it. So if you are using Phaser.js uh, to build your video game, uh, especially if it's a mobile game, but it doesn't really matter, it can be a web-based game too, uh, and you are seeing issues with performance and you're doing a combination of Phaser and Angular, uh, I'm going to show you how to fix that. Okay, there's a, a nice, very easy, very quick trick. Uh, now, if you are joining this and you are here uh, from our webinar that we've had yesterday with, uh, in partnership with Ionic, uh, this is a combination uh, presentation. It's kind of a follow-up because a lot of our community members uh, were asking for a little bit more information about different topics. So we wanted to make sure we can provide that. Okay, and uh, we will be using an example repo for Ionic and Phaser. So let's get started. All right. So if you want to follow along here and see the actual repository that we're going to be using today, uh, you can go to open, github.com slash openforge, and we're going to be using the Ionic Phaser game template. So we built this as a template. Uh, that way everyone can use it. So feel free to, you know, to check it out. You just click use as a, as this template and it will actually, uh, you know, allow you to clone it. A uh, couple high level things about the template itself. We do have some instructions in here for just making this template your own, like what you need to do to find and replace um, to just instantly get to, you know, get to your application and get to market. So uh, hopefully that helps. And we also have some OpenForge uh, standards in here for linting, like uh, for instance, ESLint and Prettier. Uh, we have our Husky hooks. So there's about, I'd say probably 20 some hours worth of work uh, set up in the repository itself. So if you are starting fresh, this might be a good starting place for you. All right, so I'm gonna go into the application here just so you can see what we are using. Okay, so this is the application. We have a little uh, blacksmith here and it is an Ionic application uh, with Phaser uh, for the actual game piece. So the way we have it structured is we use Ionic for the business logic and Phaser for the game logic. And that seems to be a really good combination uh, for building mobile games. So uh, this is our blacksmith and I'm just going to go over here and kind of show you guys the code base really, really quick. Again, this is not gonna be a long video, uh, but we're gonna focus on just one thing here. So if we go into our application and we go into example app under our mono repo structure, then we can see that we have example app, source, app, and under app, we have the app component. Uh, this is where we have the go to home page, go to shop, etc. So that's over, if I can tab to the right page, it's over here. Okay, and then we also have our home component, which is right here. And this is an important piece of the home component that is related to Phaser. So if you guys are familiar with Phaser, you have to have a div somewhere that has an ID, and this ID is what Phaser attaches to. So I'm going to go now to our Phaser library and show you how to uh, fix your performance issues. So let's go here to libs, example app, and Phaser. And we're gonna to go to our singleton. Uh, we have Phaser as a singleton. That way it makes it easy as a state management engine, right? You know, a lot of times with video games, you wanna have a single source of state management truth. So that's why we have our phaser singleton dot module here. Okay, so let us uh, show a couple things. Let's see here if we go down to the init function. Okay, so on our init for our singleton, we can see that we have our phaser instance instantiated. So basically what we do is we say, if it's not, if there is not an active game already set in the singleton instance, we're gonna create one, okay? But remember, singleton means there's a single instance, so we should only ever instantiate it once. And we say phaser, dot, phaser singleton service dot active game is equal to new phaser game. These configurations are standard from phaser's documentation. So we're not doing anything different here, okay? We can see that we are targeting the div uh, that we had in our homepage. So again, nothing different. So if we run this as is, and I'm going to save, so we can just make sure it is working perfectly. And we come here and we refresh our application, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our uh, console log, and if you've never done this before, just inspect. And I have Angular's DevTools installed. So it's an extension on Chrome. Uh, just type in on Google, Angular DevTools, right? And you'll find it. I'm gonna go over to this. I'm gonna click on this profiler button here. All right, now the profiler allows us to start recording our actual application to see what the life cycle uh, you know, events are going and how, like how often Phaser is actually, I'm sorry, Phaser and Angular are detecting uh, changes and doing UI updates. 
So we're going to click start recording. And oh my God, look at that. Yeah, I, and I don't know if you can see how fast it's going here, but we're already at 600 events. Okay. So basically what's happening is phaser is saying, Hey, I'm going to update 60 times per second. And because phaser is running inside of angular phaser then triggers angular to also do its life cycle detection. So basically what you have here is you have a huge performance issue because angular is looking for any changes inside of the application. Right. And then it's going to update everything. So it's actually updating, uh, you know, the home page uh, for the actual Ionic application here. Uh, it's updating like the surrounding uh, container, it's updating everything. You can see in the time I've been talking already 3000 events. So obviously that's not good. So let's stop recording here and let's see how do we fix this. So we're going to go back here and we need to use Angular's NG zone. OK, so I already have it added into the constructor here, but if we wanted to uh, just show you exactly what you would want to do, you would want to import ng zone from Angular slash core, right? That's it. And if we read the definition here, uh, the ng zone, the common use of the service is to optimize performance when starting a work consisting of one or more asynchronous tasks that don't require UI updates or error handling to be handled by Angular. That's an important differentiator because it doesn't require UI updates by Angular. Obviously, Phaser is doing its own UI updates. So we import that there, and then we add this as a, a private uh, um, attribute that's passed into the constructor right here, right? And then we are going to start doing a little bit of coding. So let's see here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we can actually access it. So since this is a singleton, just passing it in here uh, is not necessarily like going to always be the best approach. So what we can do instead is we can say, let's go private static ng zone, and we're going to use our ng zone, right? So it's going to be ng zone type. Okay, beautiful. And that is going to allow us to access it uh, within the singleton itself, right? So uh, that's a very important part here. And then we are going to under our so if we say if the parent module, so that basically just means that if the singleton already exists, then we're going to throw an error because we should not be instantiating it twice. Otherwise, we are going to uh, basically set the ng zone for this instance. So we're going to go phaser singleton service dot ng zone okay, is equal to this right, dot ng zone. Okay. And Oh, and I apologize. That is, we do need the private uh, ng zone in here is type ng zone. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the underscore to show that we're passing it in. All right, beautiful. All right, so we basically, uh, we have instantiated, that type passing it in here, we instantiate it, all right, the ng zone itself. Uh, and then here in the phase of singleton instance, we're basically just saving a reference to it for the singleton itself. All right, so. We got the ng zone passed in. We are associating it with uh, this uh, private attribute here for the singleton service. And then we are going to go down to our ng init. So under ng init, this is where we have, again, the phaser game being instantiated. We want to run this outside of the phaser zone, or of the, sorry, of the angular uh, ng zone. So it's very easy. All we're going to do is we're going to call phaser singleton service dot ng zone, right, dot run outside of Angular. And then we're going to make this function. Whoops, let me get my syntax right here. Okay, and we put a semicolon. All right, beautiful. So basically, this is going to allow us to run anything that's inside of here, outside of Angular. So we can very simply just copy and paste this, put it inside. Okay, and save. All right, let's see if this compiled. It compiled successfully. Beautiful. So now let's go in here and we are going to go back to our profiler. Uh, we refreshed. I'll just show you the refresh again so you can prove I'm not crazy. And we're going to click start recording. All right, now I'm going to interact with it a little bit. All right, beautiful. So look at this here. So far, 
It's been a couple seconds and we only have eight events. These events are only triggering when I'm interacting. And there, you notice it is not triggering when I'm interacting with Phaser, okay? It triggers when I open the shop modal, right? So this obviously changes uh, the detection, the UI detection cycle. I'm gonna purchase a sword here. The blacksmith is gonna start working on the sword, right? It does some more change detection. But again, before, by this point, we were at 3,000 uh, iterations, right, of the actual life of the change detection. Now we're only at 17, okay? So this is one of the first things you should do when you are trying to figure out where your performance issues are coming from. Uh, it is likely due to that combination. Uh, now, if you if you encounter anything else, if you have any other like difficulties with performance and you want to provide an example online, uh, please comment on the YouTube channel. Uh, we will respond and we'll make more additional videos based upon what you guys are wondering. Uh, we just need to make sure that there's actual, you know, an actual uh, example that we can reproduce or that we can see what we're doing. And uh, yeah, and I hope that helps you. So uh, kind of just, you know, last cleanup pieces here. Again, this is in the repository already. So uh, it is running in the NG zone. So if you go again to openforge uh, oh, github.com slash openforge ionic phaser game template, you can check this out. Uh, and on our YouTube channel, definitely check out our YouTube channel. Uh, you know, you, please subscribe, like all that typical stuff. And most importantly, please comment because the comments that you tell us are gonna be the things that uh, we're gonna be building content for. So we'll be doing probably two to three more videos in regards to uh, Ionic, Angular, and Phaser from the webinar that we had just recently did in combination with Ionic. And then we'll be doing more mobile app based uh, uh, videos. I can't talk today, I haven't had my coffee. Uh, we'll be doing more mobile app based videos. Uh, so that's all that content is gonna again be based upon what you are asking us for. So thank you all very much. I appreciate the time and a happy mobile game building. And we have a beautiful thank you slide just for fun. So thank you very much, guys. Talk soon.